Carlson. When I came into office, of course, I named my own commissioners. I looked at him and smiled and I said, you shouldn't have turned down my conceal and carry, chief. You're out of here. Good. What a how could you look at a mayor and not let him have a gun? <laughs> I don't know. I, all I, I wanted to conceal and carry. And, and in those days in Minnesota, police chiefs could turn down. They, it was all in their hands. Oh, I remember that. Yeah, it was all of the so country. You had all the people in northern Minnesota up in the woods could get conceal and carry like nothing. But if you were down in the urban centers of the Twin Cities, you couldn't get one no matter who you bribed. <laughs> Unbelievable. And it's just sick. But that's changed now, Alex. Uh, it happened with me, and then Governor Pawlenty continued on with it. No, I know you did that. You've been pro-gun. That's We, we, yeah, we love and, it. And, and we changed it to shell issue. If you're But we made it stringent. You have to pass a background check. You have to take uh, a, a gun training course, and you have to take target and shoot a minimum score. Because I don't want people carrying guns that don't know what the hell they're doing with them. Let's uh, go ahead now and go to a few calls for Governor Jesse Ventura. And a couple up in a week, we're about to officially launch the satellite stuff. I'll not be able to skip breaks ever again because of TV. But we can, I'm going to skip this one for Jesse because I want to have as much time as we can. I've been hogging him as usual, not going to calls. Uh, let's go to Matthew, uh, who is calling from. It doesn't say where he's calling from. He's calling from deep space. Uh, so, Matthew, you're on the air with Jesse Ventura. Go ahead. Very exciting Mr. call. Mr. Ventura. Yeah, go ahead, Matthew. Yes, Matthew. Uh, I'm coming from the former uh, Republic of Tennessee. What FEMA region is that? I guess that'd be six or five. Go ahead. I'm calling from FEMA region six. Uh, hail to you, Mr. Ventura. I understand you're from the men's department of the Navy. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm from the men's department of the Navy? No, I wasn't a Marine. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the Marines okay. used to always say. They'd always say, yeah, we're part of the Navy, the men's department. I'm not a Marine. <laughs> I'm a frog man. Always remember. Wait, always remember the Marines claim they're first ashore, but UDT's been there before. That's right. Okay, go ahead, caller. <laughs> okay, so uh, speaking of how people obfuscate things mathematically, right? Uh, I had heard you mention uh, similarities between Horace and Jesus. And the, one of the big reasons why, you know, this is so important to a lot of people is because. There's something called the George Washington Retirement Plan. No retirement at all. People standing up, doing the right thing, even when they're tired, even when they're 64 years old. So uh, speaking of the mathematical similarity between Jesus and Horace, I'm going to cite a book, Gerald Massey, The Natural Genesis, from 1883. So let's say you've got 200 independent events that Gerald Massey has identified as being similar between Jesus and Horace. That would be 0.5 to the 200th. That comes out 6.22 times 10 to the negative 21. Now, there are 400 prophecies fulfilled with Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ's death was not a victimization thing. It was an achievement. So that would be... All right, be listen, I'm going to jump here. I'm going to jump because I want to get to the callers. So if I'm you get believe in. all that, I'm sorry, but I don't. Well, I, I, I'm not getting in a fight with a caller, and I, and I, and I don't screen the calls, so that makes them interesting and wild cards. I, I, I but know, I, You know... I guess he's doing that, trying to win me over from my atheist position. <laughs> well, I, I'm, I'm not sure quite what he was doing, but my big issue Don't here... Don't get me wrong. I'm not anti-religion. People believe in anything you want. That's part of freedom. Let's go ahead now and take another call. These callers are all over the map uh, for Jesse Ventura. Uh, how do you say that? Jera in California? You're on the air. Go ahead. You can just call me an Info Warrior Princess for short. Okay, Info Warrior Princess, uh, go ahead. You flag my resume. I'm a thousand percent prepared to serve um, anyone. Um, I'm energized by all of your uh, nutraceuticals, and anyone not experiencing your products is missing out on the true essence of a vibrant life. Uh, Jesse and Alex, we don't need a drop of oil. Hemp can fuel the world. Hemp is manna from God. Hemp will end the wars and heal the planet. Hemp is a solution to creating cottage industries stamped, made in America. Hemp is no pestilence. It grows with little water and neutronizes the soil. It burns hot and slow. It creates no pollution. 
Hemp is world peace. Well, let me get Ventura's take on what you're bringing up, and I appreciate your call. Oh, uh, I, absolutely, I, like 18 states have legalized it. Or that's marijuana, not just him. And still, the feds won't, uh, you know, back off. But yeah, the whole story you've you've done you've talked about that how they banned hemp so the cotton industry and also polyester could take over. What would you do as president with the drug laws, Jesse? No, it actually it was William Randolph Hearst that got it banned because he owned thousands of acres of timberland. That's right, and and he wanted paper. to force us to use the timber to make paper rather than hemp. No, the callers precisely. I won't quite take it to the limit she did that it's the savior of the world, but hemp is a wonderful hemp and marijuana is a wonderful product god made it if you believe in god right and it has so many it's a medical plant it has so many uses from clothing to energy willie nelson burns it in his biodiesel buses not just in his pipe and uh and uh for us to eradicate it for 75 years is criminal and it's high time if you want to become energy independent then legalize hemp and marijuana through the entire United States of America and get it off. It should be left up to the states anyway. That's what we do with drinking and alcohol. It's left up to the states. This should be left, marijuana should be left up to the states also. Well, there's no doubt that um, alcohol is a lot worse than marijuana and people do abuse it. Uh, what I don't like is people either worship it or they hate it. And it, it has a lot of benefits. It has some problems when it's abused, anything does. Uh, and it's just, you shouldn't be putting people in prison for marijuana. I mean, that's... So, well, let me finish with a quote I always like to give, Alex. Marijuana is to rock and roll what beer is to baseball. Absolutely. It certainly is. Um, we've got callers all over the map here. Let's go to Sherry in Texas. Why don't you talk to Jesse Ventura? Sherry, go ahead. Oh, thank you, uh, Jesse Ventura. I, I love when you're the guest. I wouldn't miss it for the world. I have a question. I kind of agree with Bernie Sanders, but it's only because we're not on an equal footing with the rest of Europe. Uh, they ban all these psychotropics. And um, I, my question is, see, what do you think? How do, we, how do we know who's going to be prescribed these drugs? They trigger alcohol consumption, which can lead to this manic behavior. And then what happens if there's a transportation or communication breakdown and they can't get these drugs that creates the worst reaction of all and and they are um they have as a side effect suicide so whatever percentage uh is the pr of suicide is the problem that's the psychotropic drugs not the guns well sure the insert says it can make you kill yourself or go psychotic i appreciate your call uh, governor ventura what is your view on ssris well, what's SSRIs, Alex? Serotonin reuptake inhibitors, uh, uh, anti, uh, uh, you know, Prozac. Oh, all of that stuff. Well, you know, they uh, <laughs> they stick it in our water. <laughs> You're right. Fluoride is the base of it. Fluoride's the base of Prozac, and they put it in the water to dumb you down. I've always been a believer that, unfortunately, our medical system today is controlled by pharma. And pharma also controls our media and television. Take a look in the afternoon on how many ads are pharmaceutical ads on television. Pharma controls television, mainstream television. Like half the ads. And, and the point being is pharma, yes, they can do some great things with drugs. But they also, to every drug, there's a, there's a yin and a yang. There's, there's a positive it can do, and there's always a negative side to any type of drug usage. You have to weigh those consequences, and there's a lot of other forms of healing out there rather than pharmaceutical. Exactly. Whether it's vaccines or SSRIs, they just want to act like there's no problems, and then we shouldn't have a debate about it, and just it's all safe and effective, and it's not. Uh, let's go ahead and take another call. We're going to talk about the book briefly and let the governor get out of here, and the fourth hour is coming up with Rob Dew. Uh, let's go ahead and take a call uh, from Jason in Minnesota. You're on the air with Ventura. Hello. Yes, Jason, go ahead. Hey, hi, Jesse. Um, I, I wanted to talk to you for a while. Um, I, apparently for my family, I heard you worked with my dad. When you were a uh, bouncer at a bar, my dad was James Gunther Horn. Did you know Jimmy? <laughs> I'm not sure because I bounced at a number of bars and it's so many years ago, I can't even remember the names of the bars. 
<laughs> I've seen you do that ad for a liquor store, though, with the keg under your arm. That's yeah, funny. That was way back when. Uh, <laughs> I wish I could say that I did, but again, I, I, I worked at a lot of bars because when you're at that age and you're big and you're powerful and strong, it's an easy, well, not sure. necessarily an easy way to make a living, but it's a way to make a living. Sure, like, Jason, we got to jump. We got a minute left with Ventura. He wanted to know about TPP. You know, they signed that last week. We still can't read it, Jesse. To do what? The Trans-Pacific Partnership. They, they signed it last week, but we still can't see it. What, did they put it under national security? Yeah, they just won't let Congress see it. Won't anybody see it. It's just incredible. We ought to... We ought to do a whole show on that. Briefly, what are some of the new chapters added to the book, American Conspiracies? Well, we cover, of course, uh, we cover the GMOs and, and how they're poisoning all our food and the rate of danger from it and how, uh, who is it, uh, who's the big company again, Alex? Uh, can't think of them right now. Monsanto? Monsanto. Uh, how Monsanto pays off the politicians with donations and then the politicians name Monsanto people to the FDA. You know Monsanto has never been turned down by... I know. We're out of time. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you. America Conspiracy is available now. Fourth hour coming up with Rob Dew. He'll cover current mind control and more.